wouldn't normally speak before doing a performance or a reading, feeling like that contextualization often ruins the performance and the reading, but I feel like I must today. I won't speak for too long, though, because I think it'd be slightly churlish to overdo it, but I don't think there's superlatives enough to describe the influence of Jerome's work on my own and his influence on people over the last five decades. It's really an extraordinary privilege to be in the presence of Jerome and the things he's done. When I first came into poetry maybe five or six years ago, that's as long as I've been interested in reading and writing poetry, I was so fortunate to get the whole world of poetry at the same time. And I took Jerome's anthologies and his own work completely for granted, thinking they were representative of the wider world of poetry, which they're absolutely not. Without them and his own work, uh, myself as a poet, and I think a lot of people in the world who read poetry, the rest of them especially, would be significantly poorer. A huge element that I'm interested too, that I wanted to draw out with the question that I asked Jerome, as I do organise and collaborate a lot, is how that balances with my own practice, my own singular work, and how Jerome's managed to do that with his own work throughout his whole life while creating these definitive assemblages and anthologies, which he's become so well known for. Jerome's one of the few people whose work I've followed and retrogressively gone back right through his entire catalogue, and two of his books especially have become personally very important to me. Poland, 1931, and Seneca Journal, which I think were published in 1974 and 1978, and seem to be connected to some of the anthologizing assemblages that Jerome's done too. So all I'll say about what I'm about to present is that there are deep connections between the work that I read of Jerome's and my own that have emanated from similar practices, and that this uh, performance or reading is constructed from both of our poetries, and I shan't define or explain which is which, hoping that you'll be able to recognize the quality I'm a super team. <laughs> <laughs> to the sun, the buffalo, stirring the ashes, sun bear, moon buffalo, the great bear. Peace be with you, said the blood to the fat flies. The bear has a stump as a tail, the bear as a constellation that looks down, the bear quadrupedal, the earth's best mammalian killing machine. The bear skin reading the guide to life in six languages. The bear is my middle name. The bear descended from a common ancestor. The bear was dawn 20 million years ago, the size of a terrier. The bear as the language that leads the living forest of the north. 
The bear murmuring all grass is flesh. The bear as some words I won't dare call a poem. The bear blonde, populous, happy to see you worry your food. The bear has paws with which you might measure in awful size a human scream. The bear to see white, fat, blubber exposed. The bear seeking seals for it to flail and tear to pieces. The bear is paper, beyond fearsome to awesome, a good friend. The bear with a patchy sun belly rubbed with sand. The bear is a white sickle moon. Not a sweet beast, he is power, not a sweet man, he is like a muscle tightly waiting to crack down and break a skull, maybe splintering the jaw, maybe making teeth his own almost non-existent row tooth in the centre silence. That silence stirs, it is a dance vibrating at each centre of each isolated nerve reminds him of the song he wants to sing when dying, and if Beaver sings it to him now, it means an easy death. Like the sloth who accepts as reserves to the beaver, the sloths who lives in trees, harmless, I will grow lips to caress them. The sloth who hangs in the floods of harmful corrections, I am kissing. The sloth who is awful to watch, really, it is in public. The sloth who poses as the love of peace, said Augustine. The sloth who never poses, they are themselves trees animated. The sloth who parathroated to William Answer asks, am I not a man and your brother? The sloth who asks, is not good sense the companion of all complexions? The sloth who asks, how can you treat me this way? The sloth who living in man's coattails is sacking cities. The sloth who is confused is a famous image visited by many million pilgrims each year. The sloth as a cropped ear, the sloth who has noblesse oblige, the sloth who with tiny fingers is helping each human to cut themselves, the sloth who is hard to see in the mirror while cutting. Even your beard be shorn, poor boy. He's lying helpless. Comes a bear, what enormous sniffer says. This one's our friend, he speaks the language of animals. Oh, little monster man or Indian, the others come now. Eager to tend him with their love, they dangle a power. Tiny scrapings of their flesh, their vital organs, fluids. Strain to the finest drop, they smear first on the scalp, saliva, mucus, semen, tears. Burning his scarlet cover is a map. This wisdom will never leave me, even your lips, funny old bear. Snout, honey ringed, open my own grunt, grunt. I eat your tongue, enormous in my mind, the bear's head grows. I suck his eyes, oh vision, the respectable table drops away. The law is innocent for once and priceless, says the Baal Shem. In the woods, the children break out of their caves, naked, happy. Between life and death, the sun is in the cup. The Baal Shem walking by river gets vision of the fish, renewed in China poems that make us laugh and swim. And I must be getting old, my son says. Seven with a light, one line beard, he sits learning the speech of animals who love us. Sometimes will bring us medicines. This one they call the little water stirs up real easy in the dish could save your life. The bear robe had no claws. The buffalo robe was headless. 
The bear is a burning hammer, stomping but completely thoughtless. The bear in a fur bag in need of claws. The bear with a specially shaped mouth for insects. The bear mistaken for a giant sloth but moving too often. The bear is the animal embodying fear of an eclipse. The bear is a whole country of people running. The bear is our son, the bear that kills more than most. The bear growling to make it worse. The bear like a group of people talking so that you can't hear them. The bear sees crows lift their wings to give the signal. The bear who wants to be tickled. The bear who growls, you should have left when I arrived. The bear on a bike is as far as the human imagination can stretch. Poland, 1931, the fish. The dead fish has no eyes, says my son, Poland, has no eyes. And so we live without associations in the past. We live nourishing incredible Polands, lazy, alive, remembering our mother's pictures in the grass. This is the Jewish poem, not being Jewish, much less being Polish, much less being human. We are miles away and we move towards a live and fat, a tender treasure, an illusion. How clean we are. We sing the fathers having once been in system, now turned deaf. They open stores in Kansas, dream of links to China secret cargoes with a mad impulse to buy and sell. Some mark a pause between occasions, like a holiday, a wedding, more like a game of chess, wherein the figure holding up the queen leans over, dies, but leaves a hole for sleep. I am offended, you as a snake. What use is being without a mind if the one cannot listen? How this is a foot to have not returned the handwritten letter, but to practice listening in the city. Were it not a ledger of badges being lowered and detonations of impulses from the throats of noise like a baby being born with a cord around its neck? Not sad, it would be said to be massive, a sound all the more enormous as it has grown from a tiny thing like the city singing the sound of dying when it is merely tired. With no sun even inside the sun, no lack for small colours, just colour in nature, work of the caved-in sun to stay in port as digger of graves, as if you don't know how to swim in it, you'll sink in it. A Polish anecdote. He died among colleagues, runs the Polish epitaph. The body falls down from the saddle without sorrow, and other soldiers ride their horses over him, singing, Sleep, sleep, dear colleague, and in your dark grave, we wish you sweet dreams about Poland. Beautiful losses, etc., where each man has many colleagues, only one friend, says Marshal Pilsudski, to be vanquished and not to surrender. This is victory. The rope 
darkly glassed over like a shattered windscreen. I dreamed of what I don't remember, which is a portent that things will be exactly the same tomorrow. It's child to infancy, a population really growing smaller because it's nails faced in. And I walked by the side, and he took me by his hand, and he raised me upon his wings, and he showed me those letters, all of them, that are graven with a flaming sword on the throne of glories, and sparks go forth from them and cover all the chambers. Thank you. Thank you so much.